Are you ready? I think so, yes. <laughs> okay, so Vanelle, thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Can you please start off by telling me a little bit about yourself and the work that you do? Um, so I'm a 24 year old and I have lectured for a couple of years and interestingly I'd always wanted to do art like it's something that I grew up doing mm -hmm. only because I had to find a world like that I created for myself and that was through drawing that I could literally leave an entire world that mm -hmm. I wanted and no one would have an influence over it because it was like a turn of a page every page that I close like no one can come into that world so luckily I've been able to keep my creativity and the interest and now I'm a full-time artist so I've stopped lecturing and I still collect art like that's my other passion and yeah I, like now I'm also keen on like I'm slowly going back into fashion I did study fashion for a year and now I'm slowly going back to it and I'm also trying out interior so I'm constantly trying to entertain my mind. What drew you towards uh, doing art as a kid? As a kid? Yeah. Um, initially I wanted to do like style people's hair because uh, my mom always wanted like by the end of the night she's like just play braid my <laughs> hair and I'm like okay cool I'll do it. And then I think realizing, like working with my hands and the creation and like making someone look pretty, I was like, <laughs> I'd like to do this. But then in the environment I grew up in, it was like frowned upon. And so when I wanted to actually go to someone who was already owning a hair salon, they're like, no, you can't do that. Even the person who owned it was like, no, you're a boy, why are you doing that? Why do you want to do that? And so it was like from that rejection, I was like, okay, you need to find something else. And then I had a cousin who used to draw and I was like, okay, let's try this out. And from there, I started drawing like, and I took it more seriously than he did. Because <laughs> I think I found the joy of just creating, um, writing, personal stuff. Like, um, and also I didn't grow up with a lot of kids around me. So I that's how I just created my own environment. Can you tell me a little bit about the concepts you work with and the mediums that you've been exploring? Um, the concepts that I work with, I think it starts with myself in terms of like identity. I think I got inspired by, especially by Frida Kahlo's coach where she says, I paint myself because I know myself the best. Mm -hmm. And when I read that, I was like, that is true because I've always been looking for external stuff to paint, like flowers, because those were the subjects that I was exposed to initially, like landscapes, people, and when I realized that you can actually focus on yourself because there is content, like there's plenty of it, then I started like introspecting. By that time, I'd already been writing diaries. So I was like, what if you just wrote a bigger diary where people have access to it and that's how it came about and within that I deal with gender studies I deal with um, being an individual I feel like a lot of us don't accept ourselves or aren't comfortable with being ourselves I mean I'm still struggling with the concept of the self but I think every day I'm getting there and with this me within the mediums that I choose to express myself I use um, all mediums except for watercolors, but they all imitate watercolors. <laughs> and I love watercolors, I love the expression they have. And but my interest was we spend so much time like trying to mold ourselves to other things and avoiding ourselves. So I think it's the same with my mediums as well. As much as I love watercolors, I'm not using watercolors, but other mediums that will imitate watercolors. You speak about how most of your work centers around self and exploring your own identity. Um, with the people who you create your work for, like your audience, when they look at the work that you create, what would you hope that they're able to take away from it by looking at how you've 
poured out your emotions and your experiences onto your canvases? Uh, I think interestingly, like yesterday I had someone over at my place and the like when I look at your figures I feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. and the fact that it, if it takes them to an uncomfortable space for me that's good because then it's an emotion that you would necessarily not want to put out there. Mm -hmm. I mean I've done a, body, a whole body of work about loneliness and that's something that people don't want to really speak about yeah. and probably most of us feel it. So I want to take out topics that aren't like on the surface, like that are sort of under the carpet and I want to bring them to light. So um, as also my recent show was about love with the question mark and I've seen that in every conversation that I spend with anyone, relationships always are the subject. And so now I want to tackle the more private issues of that dealt within the idea of love and being human and just like bring that about to people and that there's a discursive. And I feel like in the gallery it's interesting that so many people like come in from different walks of life, like from different careers and I, I like that. I like that so meaning the conversation is not one sided, it's like always mm -hmm. like a broader yeah. conversation. Yeah. In the work that you do, who have been some of the biggest influences in terms of other creatives and artists? And also what are some art movements that have really shaped the work that you do now? Um so artists that have actually shaped my career, I think Marlene Duma and I hope one day I get to meet her because mm -hmm. I feel like every day I speak about Marlene Duma. <laughs> but obviously I think you could never paint like the next artist unless you're really just imitating them. Yeah. So within the same discursive of her work, like her medium, I've also found my own voice mm -hmm. and I think people are also able to now link that voice to myself. And also Penny Siopis um, has series Pinky Pinky. I think that has shaped my interest in color. Mm -hmm. I wear a lot of pink, I paint a lot of pink, and I think it's that, it's that. I think there's more to the color for me that I read, and so I'm also trying to explore what does the color mean in society. And it's interesting how we get classified in colors as well. Yeah. So for me, I'm always trying to break those boundaries. And I think new expressionism mm -hmm. and expressionism have been like the key art movements that have inspired my art. Yeah, I'm really about emotions, like I speak <laughs> emotions every day. <laughs> Emerging onto the art scene locally or maybe on a more like international level, so what would you say have been some of the biggest challenges that you've personally faced along your journey? Um, any challenges, to be honest, I don't think I've really experienced any challenges. I feel like creating for me is easy as breathing mm -hmm. and the more I create, like I'll spend a whole day working and by the end of the day I'm like, oh but you didn't do anything <laughs> and yeah, so I think that's how it is for me. But I think I had to monitor money from a very early situation, like I'm very early in my career where I knew the more I ensure my ideas, that means I save enough for a year where if nothing happens within that year, I'm still able to create freely. And I think the idea of play, I try to initiate that whenever I create. So it's never serious to say, this is what you have to create and this will definitely sell. Like I'm, I'm not trying to create for sales yeah. and it's literally, I'm trying to express myself as deep as I can. And I'm actually going into a new direction and I'm afraid that people might not respond well to it, but it's okay, at least I've got my chance to express yeah. myself. Yeah. How do you deal with criticism then? Yeah, I try not to find out the opinions about the work and I think that helps me create honestly mm -hmm. and I'm also not dependent on how people perceive and digest the work because if I want that, if I had to get confirmation all the time like oh yeah you, we like what you're doing then I'm not doing what I should be doing 
so I try to guide the creating space for myself like that it's away from most people mm -hmm. and then people come into my space by invite. Do you feel like maybe too many of your peers worry too much about receiving a confirmation from society today? I think a lot of people, I mean also myself, there is a sense of confirmation that I kind of want, mm -hmm. but I think it's your relation to that, like that affirmation. Yeah. If you can know yourself that what you're doing is good enough, I think it helps your art as well and your creativity to go forward mm -hmm. and you go to like levels where you'd even be scared of going mm -hmm. and just being okay with that yourself mm -hmm. it pushes you to that direction but if you worry so much about oh people might not like this then you're gonna kill that idea and probably that could have been your best idea what is some advice that you would give to people watching this who still struggle in coming to terms with the fact that not everyone is always gonna fuck with your work and that's like really normal, it's okay. Yes. What would you tell them? Just be yourself. I think always be yourself. I think the industry is looking for individuals mm -hmm. more than people who are trying to be someone else. I mean also myself within the mediums that I work with, there's still recognition of other people but I'm still honest to myself that this is the medium that I like and this is the medium I choose to express myself with and the style. So I think people need to just accept that what they like is enough mm -hmm. and it, it might not be appreciated by everyone but the few that do appreciate it will understand and want to engage further mm -hmm. and then create a bigger world. What would you say have been some of the biggest doors that have been opened for you in your arts career? Um, the doors that have been opened to me, it's so interesting that I had a five-year plan <laughs> and I thought, yes, that's what I'm going to do. And everything that I had in my five-year plan opened in a year. Wow. And yes, that was like crazy. Yeah. But I think interestingly with that, it just shows with planning that you might have a plan but the universe is a different plan for you. And I thought last year was like my biggest year because I had won awards. Um, I did two shows, like I did shows. Um, I, I exhibited internationally as well. Um, for the first time, my art took me to Paris, wow. where I'm mm -hmm. always going to be. And I thought that was the highlight, but I didn't know that this year would even be a grander year. Um, I, I had my first show in Jan, which is called Love, and the response was insane. Like, it was the most insane out of all my shows. And then immediately after, Zayt Smolka acquired my work, and now they're giving me a six-month exhibition. Like, I didn't know that when I went to Zayt for the first time that I'd actually even have an opportunity to show even one work <laughs> and next thing I've got a show of my own. Um, after that I have been approached in Germany for a show that's what I'm currently working on and I've got a residency starting next week in Paris. Um, I've been called to New York for a show as well. It's potentially a solo exhibition. Yes and we with my gallery Smith Studio, I'm working on an art fair in Paris at the end of the year, aka, okay. so it's like, it's insane. That's crazy. <laughs> Can you list some of the awards that you won last year? Um, in 2017, I won the SA Taxi Foundation overall award, and yes, that was pretty Congratulations. impressive. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and that was like three years of trying, and wow. on the third year I got it right yeah. and same with the Barclays Latelier wow. I had been trying for three years and I got the Gerard Sokocha award um, which is taking me to Paris for three months so it's, it's been insane that's good so <laughs> you said you had your five-year plan yes. and everything came to fruition in a year yes. if I asked you then what would you hope to be achieving within the next five years from now what would you say um, 
My five year plan will surprise <laughs> you. <laughs> what is it? Um, it's actually, I realized um, the more I spend time with my friends and family, I realized I'd like to have a family of my own as well. So that is my plan. I feel like my art plans, I can't plan, I just have to be present within the work, like create the work. Mm -hmm. And whichever doors it opens, I'm just going to embrace it. Yeah, because yeah. if I have a five year plan and it doesn't work out, I'll be disappointed. And then, but I feel like creativity is, it's, it's got its own world mm -hmm. and its own thoughts. So I'm just living like the creativity to have its own life. And then I'll just be present. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs>